Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Um, my name is Tammy. For those of you who haven't um, seen me before, uh, <laughs> welcome to my channel. This is my daily vlog. Um, I am an internationally certified master clinical aromatherapist and um, with a background in integrative nutrition. And I primarily focus on the study of plant constituents and the way they influence uh, activity, processes, functions throughout nature, not just the human body. And um, so yeah, check it out. I work with obviously um, essential oils, being an aromatherapist. Um, don't represent a company. Never have, never will. Um, I represent the, actually, oh, pardon me, I actually represent the ability to um, blend oils based on their constituents, so kind of pairing organic chemistry of the plant to the biochemistry of the human being, and actually turning it into a specialty in oncology. Um, because as of this last month, I was diagnosed with um, both breast cancer and skin cancer, and on yesterday's vlog, I talked a bit about um, osteoarthritis. In fact, I even did a video on histamine and arthritis. And I put in that description box that this actually is in reference to basically all arthritises, okay? And other autoimmune disorders. And if you're new, hang on a second. If you've been here and you're following me along in this journey, thank you. Thank you for everybody, whether you're new or you know, or you've been with me. I'm extraordinarily grateful to, um, for you and your what you bring to this journey. And I'm putting up with all my shenanigans because God knows I'm not exactly consistent. <laughs> um, but it's really just about life, right? It's about just stepping out and doing what is appropriate for you. I mean, being the fullest expression of yourself of source energy. Um, in fact, when I do these vlogs, I know some people do vlogs and it's like, hey, follow along in the day of what I'm doing. And I spend my time researching. <clears throat> That's what gets me. I'll go hike, but where I live, I live in the mountains. There isn't a flat surface in the area. Even on the street, if I, you know, the only thing that's flat, really paved, is the street. And I'm not going to walk in the middle of the street. <laughs> so everything else is kind of rocky and up and down. And so I'm not going to go do that. And, um, because I am in the process of getting ready to go into surgery, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm really kind of um, finishing up some things so that I can actually take the time to rest over the holiday. And that doesn't mean I'm not gonna be checking in with you guys because it's part of the journey. However, one of the things that I do oftentimes to take a break from the um, thinking um, or researching, investigating, <clears throat> is I do stuff like that. See, that's my, new, my newest character right there. A heart with legs. You can see a couple more there on the wall. I, my, I, I call it heart art, but that's the one I actually did last night. Um, I dig, I dig researching. I dig digging into stuff. I'm a sleuth for truth, if you will. And um, so after I did that video on histamine and osteoarthritis, the light was terrible. So if you've watched it, thank you for putting up with it. And you know, I wanted to carry on a little bit. And one of the things I wanted to say is, although I'm doing these daily vlogs, I'm not really interested in inundating anybody with too many videos um like yeah <clears throat> and so as things come up i thought well even on these vlogs i can just share it here there's no specific agenda it's just me talking um and and this is a real important time um again because i have been on this journey of um for well over 30 years and that is really getting to know the oils i you know i it's it's like i developed this relationship with the oils and it's kind of like even when i want to know people you know i ask questions and i explore and because i really love connection and there's something about the oils that obviously they can't speak for themselves and they're being highly misrepresented and so that's kind of where I've been. I mean, I don't believe in them as just being as fragrance and bath and body and palliative care, but at the same time, the world that we live in currently is bastardizing them. Um, you don't know what you're really getting. Um, oils differ 
depending on where they're grown. It doesn't make any difference if it's you know grown naturally and without chemicals. Just the location alone, the difference in location, the very same species will ultimately be, be different chemically. So when I look at the research, I'm looking at what constituents they're using, if in fact that's the area, because a lot of these medications that we have today are based on the actions of these plant constituents. And so I don't want to replicate a, mechan um, a medication. In fact, I, and that's part of my mission, as you probably know, it's not to duplicate the mechanism of action. But, so I spend a great deal of time looking at that. And then when I go and I do stuff like that, or I go for a hike, it's really about beginning to digest it, if you will. Um, kind of just letting it float around up there. <laughs> so again, back to the histamine and the osteo, or the histamine and arthritis. It does apply. And what's fascinating to me is um, one of the things that I recall when they did a, a saliva test of me um, several years ago, I was looking at the raw data. I don't care for those reports, those colorful reports that they hand out, um, but I was more interested in the raw data. And subsequently, since doing that particular genetic test and being told, you know, by the people that I was working with in the office that I was sharing and people who, other people who were conducting these tests and everybody's saying, oh, we have problems. It's a snapshot of time. Now, a lot of them remain this, those adaptations. Some people refer to them as mutations. Some people refer to them as defects. Otherwise, you may hear them as SNPs, which stands for um, single nucleotide nu peptides. A SNP, but it's really an adaptation. It's a change to the epigenome based on the, uh, what the body's being exposed to. And that's what I was talking about yesterday and uh, histamine and arthritis is like there is a CPU unit in throughout nature and it's the serine threonine kinase process that is monitoring everything that the body's being exposed to. Now I mentioned a chemical yesterday called um, phosphatidyl inositol, okay, long word, and really what that comes about is it has like six or seven different variations and it has different process functions in the body, but all of it has to do with an inflammatory process because the body's being exposed. And there is, this is the reason why I want to go in to really specialize in oncology because on my raw data, one of the genes that I noticed that was listed there was the folate receptor. Okay. Now the folate receptor is very much like the vitamin D receptor. And what that means is it's taking folic acid and derivatives of folic acid and it's transporting it into the cell. Okay, now there's activities that go on that are just kind of um, homostatic. You know, they just kind of like keep things, everything copacetic, right? The VDR takes vitamin D into the cell. And these things can be deactivated or they can be what's called overexpressed. And a lot of these things that I'm finding with relation to arthritis and cancer, you might be wondering why am I even doing this? Because, well, I don't wanna have any more cancer. And uh, I wanna understand what's going on in my system. So as I have mentioned in other places, I am now living my work. Not only do I just get to talk about it and do it with other people when, I have, when I'm honored to do so, I now get to do it with myself. And so this is the reason for all of this excavation, if you will. So at any rate, I, I'm learning a lot. I'm finding all of these overexpressed genes that are all linked to cancer. Now this phosphatidyl inositol is also part of the folate receptor activity. So it's responsible for helping to, it's involved in the monitoring of um, what we're being exposed to environmentally, which, and then it's also used in folate receptor activity. Now, that particular chemical is generated from histamine one receptor activity. So, and this is all coming back to the fact that um, 
what we're really facing is DNA damage on a consistent basis. And anytime there's damage to the body, the body's going to release mast cells, which is going to release, which is where the histamine comes from. People are worried about you know histamine intolerance and how can we deactivate it? We're working, we're working really hard to, de we're stressing about it, really. There's ex excessive amounts of DNA damage that's occurring um, due to the environment. Now, I have talked a lot about mindset and the way we think and feel and our belief systems and that has a lot to do with it so it's not just the environment and it's not just you meaning your mind it's all of it so kind of really at some point it comes down to dialing it down in the meantime <laughs> that takes practice because we're we're trained to be geared up we are trained to overreact um, fix things, um, not allow things, and, and, and even attempt it to control it. And so here's what I was thinking about before I sat down to do this, was I totally understand why we introduce immunosuppressants at this point, because the immune system is seriously overexpressing, And so trying to get that to stop, but the way we're going about it is a form of force and control my proposition through aroma genomics is that we begin to stabilize the system we can with oils help um we can actually help deactivate the release of mast cells because here's the other thing and i would, i believe i spoke about it yesterday so if you haven't seen it then this is brand new to hear um <laughs> or at least the uh the, the video on histamine and arthritis. But the thing is, is that chronic fatigue is a major problem for a lot of people. And we're all speculating, you know, every, there's all of this, the, the way people are trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, and, and we have all of these struggles with it and it's real. And this is why it's real. Mast cells are the first line of defense besides hydrogen peroxide and white blood cells. I mean, this is like what if we get cut, but the first line of defense typically is a mast cell. And that is what contains the histamine. Now the thing is, is when we have excessive levels of mast cells being produced or released from the immune system, then there is another, um, and I wish I could remember the name of it off the top of my head, I don't, I just know it begins with the letter H. It's a hormone in the liver that is responsible for regulating the release of iron. When that hormone has been activated, the liver doesn't release iron, and we need iron for energy. We also need iron for the immune system. But there's a system that goes on that is basically keeping the iron at bay because the mast cells have been elevated. And so therefore that hormone is now being released, therefore protect or prohibiting iron from being released. And as soon as that activity backs off, there's no, long, there's no need for that hormone any longer and now iron can be you know, used throughout the body. That's why we have a lot of fatigue because we really are not using the iron as we need it. We're not getting the iron that we need, although we do have it. And so a lot of iron supplements really isn't gonna do it. What we wanna do again is calm this immune system. This is the reason why we're seeing so many issues with food sensitivities. You know, intolerances, all, all types of intolerances. You know, there's gluten, there's casein, there's histamine, there's oxalates, there's sulfur, you know, foods with high sulfur. It's like everything is bugging us. And I don't mean, you know, I'm talking about it's really irritating the system. That's because the immune system is on overdrive. So therefore, I do understand the, it, the reason for suggesting immunosuppressants. At the same time, that's an, a need to control. Now, you might be thinking, well, if you're trying to stabilize the immune system, then you are trying to control the body. What I'm trying to do, what I'm suggesting that we do is that Clearly, we're all facing a, a lot of different health issues, and it's because of this environment. It's the world that we live in. Yeah, that's one I talked about the other day. I would hate the idea that we need to bring up our kids in a world and with, oh yeah, that's just the world we live in, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, the mind and emotions, we need to get a handle on it. We absolutely do. We need to be looking at our belief systems and how they are stressing us out. 
At the same time, there's environmental factors that we don't have any control over and therefore the immune system is overactive. So I do understand that. I do understand a lot of, I mean, I even understand because here's the other thing. There's all this talk of CBD, okay? All this promotion of CBD and I, um, I have a great deal of respect for all plants. Let me put it that way. Cannabis itself is a great plant. I, I um, revealed the other day, one of my videos, that I actually do eat the raw weed at night for pain. Um, it helps me to sleep in a way that I don't, my neck doesn't get to me because if I, I can't lay in any posi position for any length of time because my neck will hurt, my back will hurt. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. So I eat a little bit of raw weed, the full weed, it doesn't, I don't get stoned from it because I don't like that feeling. Um, but it does have a wonderful effect on just helping to relieve pain. And it generally lasts probably about 12 hours, just a little bite of it. No, I'm not talking edibles. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about anything cooked. I'm talking about somebody, here, no, I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> I'm talking about somebody having, you know, a bud and you're taking a piece of that bud. That's what I'm talking about. But the CBD stuff, there's a lot of regulations that are coming up around that. So I'm not sure where we're all, how this is all going to go, but I, you know, be careful what you wish for. But at, at the same time, I do understand the promotion of, you know, the use of cannabis for um, inflammation and immune system. But I don't, here's the deal. A lot of plants, a lot of plants contain cannabinoid chemicals. Now they're not THC and they're not CBD, as I've mentioned, I think that was in my linalool video. They're not the same as that. However, they do affect the very same receptors. So we do have, for instance, beta carophyllene which does influence CB1 activity. CB1 activity, um, is generally the production of anandamide. However, there's another type of acid that gets produced when the body is stressed. So the endocannabinoid system is an important part of monitoring and regulating the stress response. See, it's all part of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So again, a number of oils contain beta carophyllene. But the thing is, is that when these, with these overexpressed genes that I'm referring to, like you can have an overexpression of folate receptor, you can have an overexpression of the BC, BRCA1 or the BRCA2, you can have an overexpression of the HER2. Those are, those last two, or the last series there, the BRCA and AGR, those are genes that are linked to cancer. But the fact is, is that all of this overexpression is linked to some form of cancer. So that goes on to say to me that the body is, you know, because what, you know, if you go into like a lot of what I'm looking at right now with regards to overexpression is they're using it as a model to try and target certain um, mechanisms and trying to, you know, trying to re-regulate them. And they're just, pardon me for saying this, it becomes, it seems like it's become fodder for entertainment. You know, I enjoy it because I'm trying to figure out how to actually help the human body combat this freaking mess that we're living in. And um, what I do know is I've heard people talk about telomeres and how, it, which is what, you know, the end of the DNA, but these telomere, telomeres are actually shortening and, they're, and our children are coming into this world with shortened telomeres. So we're already coming in here with damaged DNA. This is the reason why we're seeing childhood cancer. This isn't, this is not something that needs to be going on. So in order to deactivate this stress mechanism, it's important, you know, I'm looking at these pieces and like I said, the CD1 receptor will produce anandamide or aridatic acid. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. But the, the acid component is in response to something stressful happening. Therefore, it completely changes the way the body is going to react. It takes it from survival into, I'm sorry, from thriving into survival. And this is where, I mean, histamine 1 receptor becomes also activated. And this is a, in a form of stress. So this is really significant. This is how I spend my days. This is what lights me up 
and it's really, as I mentioned earlier, I am a, I feel like I am a sleuth for truth. The sleuth for truth is the main means that I want to understand what's happening so that through love, we can generate a healthier body. We can actually help the body do what it's designed to do. We don't have to shut down the immune system because that leads to other problems. Yes, there are overexpressions. There's without question an over, you know, overexpression and that's due to the DNA damage. But yet when we include oils, very mindfully, specifically to what's going on with your system, now we have the ability to prevent we have the ability to reduce, we have the ability to eliminate, we have the ability to regenerate. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of value to using the oils. This is what I am on a mission to do. It's like I said, be the voice for these oils because we are so misinformed about them that these are not just palliative care. But then again, the way they're being marketed, of course science is gonna come out and poo-poo the oils because we don't have access to the types of oils that they're actually studying. You know, because they're researching, say for instance, basil, you have to, it, understanding which basil, and, and not even understanding which basil, but understanding what the hell is in that basil that they're looking at. Same thing with cypress trees, you know, and other um, juniper type, um, well, yeah, basically cypress trees, but other types of trees out of Asia that they're studying and they've, you know, learning how to regulate cholesterol from the, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's looking at these constituents. This is what's valuable. And while we can try to control the chemistry of our body, the best step to do that is to actually help the body regenerate. It has the ability to regenerate, but it's not regenerating, it's degenerating. So the inclusion of oils actually helps it to regenerate. Can you see that these are actually looking a lot better? They're still pink, that's because there's a lot of healthy tissue underneath there, um, you know, healing tissue. <laughs> I was scalped, man, but they're getting smaller. And all I'm doing, if, in case you didn't see the, the day that I did, and they were wanting me to put, they asked me to put Vaseline on that. I'm like, I don't think so. So I've been using a salve that includes um, beeswax, uh, raw beeswax, actually, um, shea butter, um, califium, califylum, um, olive oil, because olive oil contains, a, has a constituent a very unique constituent that actually protects the, the skin from free radical damage. And then I've also put benzoin in there. And if you recall, or if maybe you didn't see it, but the video I did on histamine and osteo, or histamine and arthritis mentioned the use of benzoin because benzoin actually helps to calm the immune system. It actually helps to stabilize the um, HPA you know, um, use oils that will help regulate. Yes, I do eat the raw weed, but I am also using oils that help the endocannabinoid system. Now, these oils that I'm talking about, copaiba would be a good one. Robin chamomile is another one. But these oils that I'm talking about cannot be mixed with medications. If you are taking medications, then there are other things that are gonna have to go on. And, and at that time, we would want to focus more on the digestive system. That's where I would begin. Using oils that don't duplicate the mechanism of action that your medications um, are doing. You know, they don't duplicate that. They don't conflict at the liver enzyme level. These are all very significant points to the oils, again, because why? Because they are actually chemicals. And if you're using natural, authentic, gen genuine oils, then you have a complete chemistry that has, is, well, even if it wasn't, even if it was an adulterated oil, there's still chemicals in there. I'm trying to get my elbow comfortable. Sorry, I'm leaning on the tree, <laughs> chair. Um, so this is why I don't give, I don't like to give a lot of specific information. I'll tell you what I'm doing, but you have to know right up, I'm not using any meds. I'm not taking any meds right now. Um, and the plan is at this point not to take any meds. Now I may be taking some pain medication um, after my surgery. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. It depends on what they give me. Um, but I'm not a fan of pain meds at all. Um, 
In fact, when I did had this done, this created a huge headache, huge headache. I mean, cause she literally just, she just took a scalpel and just seriously shaved it. <laughs> and so I had a headache like right across here in between my eyes for two days. And so, yeah, I did eat some weed and it, it, it dampened it, but I don't know about major surgery. So we'll find out and I'll tell you what I do after that. But for the most part, and, and up until this point, I'm actually limited on what I could use anyway because um, in my consult with my surgeon, and she knows what I do, and she is somewhat um, up on, I mean, she, does, she knows that oils are more than, I mean, she's actually an oncologist <clears throat> herself out of um, Johns Hopkins. So she's familiar with the fact that oils have the potential to be blood, have blood thinning qualities to them. So of course, I have to be careful. I wasn't, you know, for the last 10 days not to use anything. So that's limited my choices right now. <clears throat> um, but this is exciting. This is very, very exciting. And to see how these mechanisms are actually happening in the body and, and to find out that a lot of this is due to the fact that it's basically the body trying to protect us from something. And of course it's producing, it's generating, um, Bad cells, is that how you want? I don't like to use the word bad and good, but you know what I'm saying, unhealthy cells, we'll put it that way. Potentially dangerous cells. We can see why it's doing it, because the body is, is registering as damaged. The CPU that I talk about is what's monitoring the DNA. The damage to the DNA, the second that there's damage, there's messages being sent out. We need more, 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 we need more help. Help, 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 help. The body's tanking. We need help. It's being invaded. You know, warning Will Robinson kind of thing. So if we want to have a species that is generating and regenerating healthy relationships, healthy bodies, healthy ideas, then we need to break the cycle of degeneration. And that's all this is. It's degenerate. We're being born in a degenerative mode already. And it's becoming progressively worse. So there's like a progression of degeneration. Somebody said the other day, I heard somebody go, well, there's no such thing as de-evolution. Bullshit. There is a de-evolution in the way we are. And so, but if you don't want to say de-evolution, there's certainly a degeneration in the human species. Um, due to our health issues and the world that we've created. So that said, we have it's time to make a decision. I'm not going to say we have to. I almost did, but I didn't. It's an opportunity right now to begin looking at, and especially with the coming of the year, we can, in fact, I'm going to be doing my radio show on the 1st of January, and it's going to be about the words create versus generate. Um... We can regenerate, we can generate because we are nature expressed. Nature, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So creating something, you know, you might do that, but that was actually just me generating myself right there. That wasn't me. I didn't create that. I generated myself. I allowed myself to generate that. I allowed ideas to flow. That's generation regeneration. Degeneration is when we start to backslide. And this is what we're seeing in the world today because there's so much damage. And the only way we're going to be able to help heal the world is to begin to stand up for what it is we want. Do we want to generate? Do we want to regenerate? We can regenerate healthy bodies, but it takes a, we have, it takes a different mindset. And this goes back into the belief systems I talked about before. It takes a different mindset to regenerate. So stick with the current belief systems that we are employing around the world and we're gonna consistently see degeneration. So what are we gonna do? Stop fighting, stop forcing, stop getting mad at everybody. Start looking out for yourself because the more that you can generate inner peace in here, the more your body can begin to regenerate. And this is again where the oils come in because the oils can actually help infuse the body to the point where there be peace at the cell level and now the cells will begin to regenerate as opposed to be on that high alert. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for tuning in. I kind of got a little winded there, but I'm excited about this stuff. This is what I love. This is what keeps me going. 
So let me know what you think. I hope you guys are doing well. Please visit synergessence.com, join my email list. And if there's any way that I can support you, you're welcome to take 15% off um, and you know sign up for a consult. You, know, like you don't have to buy any oils from me, but I can at least guide you. All right? Thanks, you guys. Until tomorrow.